tayo. Salamat sa inyong faithfulness, karong buntag. Genesis 45, verse 16. Down to verse, I actually want to read a bunch of verses from the story. We're going to start with verse 16. Genesis 45 and verse 16. Kunana, say amen. Ano man ingo, palio, para sa pagbasa pulong sa Diyos. Genesis 45, verse 16. And we'll read down to verse 19, and we'll skip down and read some more. Genesis 45, verse 16. And the fame thereof was heard in Pharaoh's house, saying, Joseph's brethren are come. And it pleased Pharaoh well and his servants. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, Say unto thy brethren, This do ye, lade your beasts, and go get you unto the land of Canaan, and take your father and your households, and come unto me, and I will give you the good of the land of Egypt, and ye shall eat the fat of the land. Now thou art commanded, This do ye, take you the wagon, I'm sorry, take you wagons out of the land of Egypt for your little ones and for your wives and bring your father and come. I want to read verse 19 of the sign because it's important. Karon ikaw gisugo, kini ang buhata ninyo. Pagdala ka mo og mga karwahe, gikan sa yuta sa Egypto, Alang sa inyong mga gagmay, o galang sa inyong mga asawa, o data ang inyong amahan, o anhe. Now look down at verse 25. We'll read a lot of verses today, more than we normally do, but we need to see the story. Verse 25. And they went up out of Egypt and came into the land of Canaan unto Jacob their father, and told him, saying, Joseph is yet alive. And he is governor over all the land of Egypt. And Jacob's heart fainted, for he believed them not. And they told him all the words of Joseph, which he had said unto them. And when he saw the wagons which Joseph had sent to carry him, the spirit of Jacob their father revived, and Israel said, It is enough. Joseph, my son, is yet alive. I will go and see him before I die. Let me read the last two verses in Visayan. Ug sila misugilon kaniya sa tanan mga pulong ni Jose nga iyang giingon nga to kanila. Ug sa dihat nga siya nakakita sa dihat nga si Jacob nakakita sa mga karwahe sa tanil karwahe karwahe wagon meaning um Sakyanan, we call Sakyanan a gibira sa mga baka or mga kabayo, wagon. Gusto na diyan na siya nakikita sa mga karwahe na gipadala ni Jose aron sa pagdala kaniya ang espirito ni Jacob na ilang amahan na ulian. Ug si Israel mi ingon, paigot na si Jose na akong lalaki na na buhi pa. Ako mo ato ug mo tanaw kaniya sa dali pa ako Mamatay. So my message this morning is, where are your wagons? Asa ang imong mga karwahe. Say, Pastor Mike, what does that mean? You'll just have to listen and find out. My Father, thank you for your goodness to us. Thank you for so many people here this morning who are faithful to you and growing and learning your word. Thank you, Father, for all you've done for our church over these four years together. Lord, we paid me with Brother Nestor and my Irish and their family right now as they grieve the loss of this man they love. Lord, I pray to be with them. But God, we ask this morning you would meet with us as I try to deliver your word. Lord, I pray you give me a supernatural strength Lord, you know I'm weak this morning, and I need your help. Please, God, 
Help me, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. But he won't lean good. Young people, I just, I forgot. Actually, the ensemble was scheduled to sing this morning, but it's okay. We, I don't want to. <laughs> and we're missing a lot of people, that 1,000 kids. So we'll see, maybe later, probably not. But we will sing. I think most of us know the story of Joseph fairly well. Alos kitang tanan, kapalo nasa story ka ni Joseph. I cannot tell the whole story today. It is a long story. Pero mag review ko, just makajut lang. Joseph was his father's favorite son. See, Joseph, on the 11th son named Jacob, and he was Jacob's favorite. And tongod si. Jacob, na higugma ni Joseph, labaw sa tanan lain, ang mga magulang ni Joseph, na dumo kaniya. They hated him so bad that they sold him as a slave. Sila nagbaligya niya yung nga usika ulipon, slave. He was taken as a slave to the land of Egypt, niya to siya sa Egypt, and he was sold to a man named Potiphar. Potiphar had a wicked wife. Dautang chura ng asawa ni Potiphar. O siya nagsumbong ni Joseph nga nakasalat siya. And Potiphar believed his wife and put Joseph in jail. So first he's a slave and now he's a prisoner. Na prisot na siya. In the prison he had two men. Uh, uh, God continued to bless him. And uh, he was put in charge. Shang nag nagati man sa prisohan bisner bisan prisoner sha shang nag bantay sa tibo prisohan and and uh, two men were brought to prison and Joseph helped them na libo na libo sila kabayan sa ilang mga damgo and so Joseph explained to them what their dreams meant and eventually God used that to get Joseph out of prison and Joseph became the second most powerful man in the land of Egypt. Nayang Pharaoh, ang hari sa Egypt, itawag Pharaoh. Og si Joseph, what do you say, nagsunod ka niya? Nagsunod ni Pharaoh. He was a powerful man in Egypt. And then we know the story. There, there was a famine, I, uh, nay, seven years of great plenty, katagaya. Uh, kat, and then human sa seven years sa kadagaya sa daghan na seven years of famine ting gutom kulang ang pagkaon walay ulan and uh, more na ma na na uga ang Nile River probably the river kind of dried up because there's no rain and there's terrible famine pero ang famine dili sa Egypt lang na ang famine dito sa lugar sa, sa pamilya ni Joseph. His father and his brother still lived in the land of Canaan. And um, there in Canaan, walay ulan, and walay, walay harvest, walay pagtanom, walay pagani. And so there's people were starving to death. But in Egypt, na daghang pagkaon, tungod si Joseph nag andam he had, he had prepared during the seven years of plenty nag andam siya nag tigum tigum sa sa extra food and there's lots of food in Egypt so Jacob Joseph's father nag nagpadala sa yung lain anak the the ten older brothers he said take take your some money go to Egypt and buy food so we can live around the little mamatay so Jacob's Brother and Joseph's brothers came to Egypt. You know the story. And Joseph was there, Shaung Nakbaligya, and they didn't know who was. They didn't know that it was Joseph. And eventually, Joseph, uh, 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 see Joseph, nila akong on. And you know the story. Where I want to focus today is what happened next after his brothers. After his brothers found out that Joseph was alive and the, almost the king Egypt. when they found that out 
they had to go back to Canaan and tell their dad. Kaulau. Hey dad, you remember when Camina Glimbong Nimo, he kind of kuna kuna pataisi Joseph? Actually, Buhi Pasha. Can you imagine how on their way home, the Egypt. I don't know how long it would take. Maybe two or three weeks. It's not a short trip. Can you imagine when they're on their way home and saying, now how are we going to explain this to dad? See, something very important to remember. Joseph, I'm sorry, Jacob had not seen Joseph in over 13 years, probably. 13 years, see Jacob, nagatoo, napatay, see Joseph. 13 years, he believed he was dead. I think it was about 13 years. I, I don't remember where I learned that or how I figured that out, but I believe it was about 13 years. If it's different, okay, I won't argue with you, but I think it was 13 years. Jacob was completely completely convinced Anakong's son Patajot. He was eaten by wild animals. He's dead. He believed that. That's a very important detail in the story. So now his 11 other sons are traveling back from Egypt to Canaan. And I noticed something. I was reading my Bible, reading the story two, two or three days ago, sometime recently. I don't remember when. I didn't want to go. Sometime recently I was reading the story and I noticed something I've never noticed before. His 11 sons need to go back and say, Dad, Joseph's alive. And they have to convince him to believe that Joseph is alive. Kinahangan sila magpatuo sa ilang amahan na buhit si Joseph. Now think about it. By this time, Jacob was old. 130 years old in the shop. Tigo lang jod. Jacob lived to be 147. In the Bible, people lived longer. But he was 130 years old. Now think about it. When you're 130, you don't want to move. Three or four weeks. Egypt. Not only that, it's not, it's not, it could be dangerous. It's a difficult thing. But here's the detail I noticed I'd never thought about like this before. When Pharaoh heard that Joseph's brothers were in Egypt, he, he, he was pleased. And so Pharaoh said to Joseph, Joseph, send your brothers back to Egypt. Tell them to get your father, Jacob, and all of their families. And he said, Jacob, Joseph, Tell them to tell your dad, if they will all come, we will take care of all their needs here in Egypt. Now remember, that's why they came to Egypt. There's not enough food. And Pharaoh said, we read it a few minutes ago, we will take care of you from the fat of the land, meaning we will give you everything you need. Joseph, if your father will come and bring all the family, we'll take care of them. That's a very important detail as well. Now, let me ask you a question. What did they need in Canaan? Food. What did they have in Egypt? So what they needed was in Egypt, right? But now let's look at verse 19. You got your Bibles? Look at verse 19. So Pharaoh says, Chase Joseph, send your brothers to come bring your dad back, and we will take care of them. Look at verse 19. 
Now thou art commanded, this do ye, take you wagons out of the land of Egypt for your little ones and for your wives and bring your father and come. Karon ikaw gisugo, kini ang buhatan ninyo. Pagdala ka mo og mga karwahe gikan sa yuta sa Ehipto, alang sa inyong mga gagmay og alang sa inyong mga asawa og dadda ang inyong amahan og anhi. Here's what Pharaoh was saying. He's saying, you have a lot of people there in Canaan. Daghang gamayang abata. Daghang mothers and, and their children. And you're going to need something to ride in to come back to Egypt. And you don't want the little kids to have to ride on camels or, or donkeys. He said, so here's what I want you to do, Joseph. I want you to send some of our Egyptian wagons to pick up your family. Egypt, and I want you to send those so they can bring the family back. Your father is too old to ride a donkey or a camel. He needs a wagon. Your wives and your children will need something to ride in. You'll, you'll need something to carry all your personal items. So, take some wagons from Egypt and use them to bring back Jacob and everyone in his family. Now look with me at Genesis 45, verse 25. I'm going to get a sip of water. Look down at verse 25. So what happened? And they went up out of Egypt and came into the land of Canaan unto Jacob their father. Do you know why it says they went up out of Egypt? What is that Messiah? Do you know why it says that? It doesn't mean they traveled north, though kind of they did. It means they traveled up into the mountains. Canaan is up, has mountains and hills and valleys. Anytime you read in the Bible about going to visit the city of Jerusalem, it always says go up, no matter which direction they're coming from, because they're going up into the mountains. That's why it says that in the Bible. Egypt is very low. Egypt is based around the Nile River, and the Nile ri a River always goes down. So that's why it says go up. But anyway, they went up out of Egypt and came to the land of Canaan unto their father and told him, saying, Joseph is yet alive! And he is governor over all the land of Egypt. And Jacob's heart fainted. Listen to this. For he believed them not. I hate that word. Governador. Jacob Naluya. Kaisha wala mitoo kanila. Now, I, ha I have a question this morning. Were they telling him the truth? Nagsulti ba sila kanila sa kamitawara? Tinood ba? Buhi si Joseph? Governor Bashar sa Egypt? He, they were telling him the truth! But he didn't believe them. They said, Dad! Dad! You won't believe this. Dali ka makatuwa ni. Pero si Joseph, buhi pa. Kami nakikita niya sa Egypto. We saw him dead. Dead, he's alive. And he's not, not only is he alive, he's the governor. He's ruling over the whole land. Dad, you won't believe it. And Joe, Jacob's like, you're right. I, I don't believe you. Dad, you're not going to believe this, but... Everything we need is in Egypt. Joseph is alive. And, and he has everything we could possibly need to take care of. And dad, the king of Egypt, commanded us to come and get you and bring you to Egypt. The king of Egypt said, if you'll come, Dad, if you'll come back with us, the king of Egypt said, he'll take care of all your needs. And Jacob sat there 
and listen to the wonderful news, the greatest news of his entire life. Pinaganindo ng balita sa entimo kinabuhi. And what did he say? He said, "I don't believe it." We say we have an expression in English: "It's too good to be true." Do you understand that expression? I don't know how to say it. Besides, subrang subrang maaya. That doesn't make sense. It's too good to be true. Does anybody know how to translate that? I don't know. means it's too good to be true. Okay, but all of you just said it, so you all know it, so I don't need to say it. Alright, let me know. Jacob said, I don't believe it, it's too good. Too good to be true. His sons, listen, listen, his sons were telling him the truth. But he didn't believe it! What else did I get to Karila? But that's not the end of the story. Look at verse 27. Something changed his mind. What was it that changed his mind? And they told him all the words of Joseph, which he had sent unto, said unto them. And when he, who is that? As Jacob. And when he saw the wagons, which Joseph had sent to carry him, I'm sorry, the spirit of Jacob, their father, revived, and Israel said, It is enough! Joseph, my son, is yet alive! I will go and see him before I die. O sila mi sugilon, kaniya sa tanan mga pulong ni Jose, nga yan giingon nga to kanila. O sa di atin siya nakikita sa mga karwahe nga gipadalat ni Jose, Aron sa pagdala kaniya, ang espiritu ni Jacob na ilang amahan na ulian. Ug si Israel me ingon, paigot na. Si Jose nga akong lalaking anak, buhit pa. Ako mo ato, mutan ao kaniya sa dalit pa ako mamatay. When he first heard the good news, he didn't believe it. So there she is. I got on some my own belief. That's the first time we're lashing like a topo. Are you listening? It was just too good to be true. He didn't believe it. Watch now. Watch. He didn't believe it until he saw the wagons. Oh, oh, Pastor Mike, I, I don't get it. Uh, let me illustrate for a moment. Have you ever noticed, if you've traveled in the Philippines, have you ever noticed that motor cabs look different in different cities? The motor cabs in Dumaguete are as big as buses in the Pitan. And uh, they're huge! But if you go to Bacolod, come on, Kayo! The motor cabs in Bacolod are small. Many of them only hold two passengers. And they're low. They're down on the ground like this. You have to duck to get inside. One of the things I want to see one day, Brother Carey, is you getting into a Bacolod motor cab. <laughs> he would never get out. <laughs> but you go to different places and the transportation looks different. Don't you think it's logical that the wagons of Egypt looked different than the wagons of Canaan? Right? When Jacob saw the wagons from Egypt, he knew those wagons didn't come from Canaan. Are, are you listening? He knew they didn't come from Canaan. They were different. La Jod. And when he saw the wagons, then 
then, he knew that the good news was really true. So the other keep the shots of Mark Arwahi, the capital of the shah, the Mayan Balita, didn't want. Why? Because he saw the evidence that agreed with the message his sons were giving him. Did you hear what I just said? Nakakita siya sa evidensya nga naguyon sa mensahe sa iyang mga anak. When he, before he saw the evidence, he didn't believe it. He didn't believe, watch, he didn't believe the good news until he saw the evidence with his own eyes. See, Pastor Mike, I, I don't understand. What's the, what's the point? This morning I'm talking to many young Christians. Shh, shh, Pamina, Pamina. mga Christian. A few of you have been saved a long time. Most of you have been saved three years or four years at the most. Daghang batanong, shh, don't talk right now, shh. Daghang batanong a Christian that he cut on because our church is young. Bago pang simbahan na God has given us a few people who were saved before, but most of you got saved in this church. Most of you, bago pan maluwas, two years, three years, maybe four. You're saved. Naluwas na ka. Salamat sa Diyos. Listen. Na nakai kinabuhing walay katapusan. You have eternal life. You are alive in Jesus Christ. Buhi ka diha ni Jesus Cristo. And you want your family to be saved. You want your, you have life, you have spiritual life, you are alive spiritually, and you want your family to be saved. Ganan kay mong pamilya, maluwas. Ganan kay mong mahigala, maluwas. Ganan kay mong kadugo, parente, maluwas. You want them to have the life that you have. And when you look at your family, you know Jesus Christ has everything they need. Si Jesus na itanan nga ilanggi kinahanglan. And you have the good news that they can be saved and have eternal life just like you. The word gospel means good news. Mayung balita. Just like Jacob's brothers going back to Egypt to tell their dad, Hey, Joseph is, Joseph is alive, and if you'll come to Egypt, the king said he'll take care of all your needs. Hey, isn't that our message? If you'll come with us, Jesus will take care of all your needs and give you eternal life. Dilik ba kanang atong mensahe po? But just like just like Jacob daghan sa atong pamilya dilip mo to o sa mayong balik pa tungkol wala pa sila nakita sa evidensya na nag-uyon sa atong mensahe. Jacob didn't believe the good news until he saw the evidence. Can I tell you why most of us can't witness to our own family? Because our family hasn't seen our wagons yet. Ang atong pamilya wala pa nakakita sa evidensya sa atong kinabuhi. Our family hasn't seen the evidence to prove that the message we're giving them is the truth. So my message this morning is really simple. You're saved. Naluwas na ka. Where's the evidence? 
Where are your wagons? Asang evidence nga nakit sa imong pamilya nga ang si Jesus nag-change sa imong kinabuhi. You see, some of us, we are really good at witnessing to people we don't know. But we really struggle to witness to people we do know. And the reason is because they know us. And it's really hard to witness to somebody who knows you. They look at you and they say, your life hasn't changed at all. Why, why do I need what you have? So I'm asking this morning, where are your wagons? Is there evidence in your life at home that Jesus has changed you? Do people look at the character in your life and say, that character didn't come from the world, it must have come from God. Those wagons, they didn't come from Canaan, they must have come from Egypt. I'll tell you why many family members and friends don't want to get saved. Are you listening? They want to see some evidence first. Now let me say that's a stupid reason to go to hell. Kung gaela ka sa tikpakaron ingno nga Christian ka ang buwang nga rason na muat sa imperyo. Why go to hell because a Christian didn't act like Jesus? But at the same time, if you're saved, people should see the evidence in your life. Our families are not going to believe the good news we have to give them until they see the evidence in the way we live at home. Dili sila motubo sa atong mayong balita hangtod sila makakita sa evidensya diya sa atong pagkinabuhi di salud sa balay. I'm going to make a blunt statement this morning. Listen to me. Some of you, your family will not get saved until you let Jesus change your life. Sometimes we get selfish and the Holy Spirit pricks our heart. You need to change this. You need to change this. I don't need to change it. The problem is if you don't let Jesus change your life, you're going to send your own family to hell. Ikaw ang mupadala sa iyong pamilya sa imperno. Ikaw ang mupadala sa iyong barkada sa imperno. Oh, maglinga-linga ta, magsori-sori sa barkada. And they see there's no change in your life. You listen to me, you're going to see them go to hell. Where are your wagons? Asang evidensya nga si Jesus nag-change sa iyong kinabuhi. Still laugh at the same jokes. Not katal kamay sa priyong nga hugaw nga jokes. Namino sa priyong nga kalibutan hong nga music. Magsuot sa priyong nga kalibutan hong nga saninas. Walay kalinan sa pamisti, sa buhok. Asana tong evidensya. Where's the evidence? It is true, Jesus will save them. He really does have everything they need. But they won't believe the good news until they see the evidence in our lives. So this morning I ask, Unsang mga evidensya ng ay mong gipakita sa mong pamilya, sa mong barkada? What's different in your life since you got saved? What's different in your life in the last three months? Is God continuing to change your life? You started to grow. Are you still growing? What, is, what have you allowed Jesus to change in your life? Has, he, has Jesus changed your attitude? Has Jesus changed your attitude? 
Has he changed your appearance? No, no soul. Has he changed your actions? Your words? Your entertainment? Your music? What is different in your life because you are a Christian following Jesus Christ? When Jacob saw the wagons, he knew there was a difference. Those wagons didn't come from Canaan. That, that didn't come from the world. That must have come from God. Can I ask you a question? Does your family see you read your Bible? Hey, Imong pamilya, nakita sila ni mo nga mag, magkanta sa Christian songs. What is what is your family see you watch on YouTube? Worldly worldly videos or preaching videos? Godly music? Do your neighbors notice that you dress different than you used to? Ang imong silingan na kamatngon nga lahi imong pamistik karon kaysa una. Do your friends on Facebook notice that you don't post the same kind of posts on Facebook anymore? Will it nice sexy pictures on the profile? Will it make dirty jokes? Will I will it night will it name on a share sa mga buwang? One. What differences do people see in your life? I'm not talking about being perfect. Nobody's perfect. But are you letting Jesus change you? Listen, if you don't let Jesus say change you, you may be stealing your family's opportunity to be saved. I don't need to change. It's not that important. But your family is looking for evidence. Imong pamilya, nangita sa evidence Heard a story. I was listening to a message. Actually, I, my kids were watching a message of a youth conference in Texas. And it happened just this past week. And I heard a man preach. His name was Mike Ray. Mike Ray's a great guy. I have a couple of his books. I like Brother Ray. Good church out in Napa, Napa, California. And um, but Brother Ray was preaching. He was telling his story. He said, my dad was a wicked, wicked man. My dad was wicked. Before he got saved, he was a wicked man. Pero ang mama ni Pastor Ray na luas. Pastor Ray's mother got saved. And for months, um, his dad just resisted, wouldn't listen, wouldn't listen. But God started to change the life of his mother. He said one day, his father called the pastor. He would hide from the pastor. The pastor would come visit him on Thursday night. They'd be sitting there watching TV on Thursday night. And pastor Moa Butner tooks the door. We don't say Ayo in America. Hey, he'd ring the doorbell, knock on the door. And his dad would say, oh, it's the preacher. Here, turn off the TV. Turn off the light. I mean, for months, Maglika is just a pastor. But his wife was changing. And here's what happened. True story. Mike Ray said one day, his dad called the pastor and said, can I come see you? I don't know what my wife has, but it's real and I want it. And he got saved. And God changed his entire life. Why? Because his wife had evidence. In Asawa, nine wagons. Nine evidence. Jesus changed her life and he saw the difference. How about you? Kung saan kalinan sa imong kinabuhi tungkol ni Jesus Kristo? Or, 
What's a kinahanga ni puhapa ni mosa para just? Saimon kinabuhi aron ang tao makikita sa kalina. I won't ever hit by the rack. 